Hey, I'm Seth with Land the House. I'm here in the off-grid tool shed where I'm gonna be starting a new YouTube channel. This channel is going to pretty much focus on tools and technology and just gear in general. So back here in the back corner, as you can see, it's got an eight foot length of wall here and then about a five foot length of wall here between my electronics and that back corner. I want this to look as pretty as possible. And so I'm gonna be installing tongue and groove uh, siding on these two walls just to make this little corner right here look nice. So let's step outside where I've got the stuff on top of my car. I'm also gonna be building a little workbench out of uh, two by sixes later. But So for today, we're gonna to be taking this tongue and groove, cutting it down to fit on that back wall. Hopefully this is eight foot. I remember measuring it at some point and it was eight. Let's see here. So actually eight foot goes all the way into the door. So we need to cut these down to about 95 inch and that should bring us right up close to that door jam there. I'm using one by six tongue groove, which actually comes out to about three quarter inch by five inch. This stuff, uh, I guess, includes that lip there as your extra half inch, but that's covered. Anyway, uh, so I think if I use 95 inches for the very bottom piece, I will be good. And then the next piece up can actually be longer than that because it will be hidden in the wall. So let's just cut this at 95. Yeah, so 97 and a quarter. So that extra little bit there will be hidden. We only have to cut these once. I'm using some 6D finishing nails to get this tongue and groove installed. Now, I'm not a professional, but I've found that whenever I put a pre-drill hole in here, things work out a lot better so it doesn't crack or split as much. So anyway, just drilling a hole there and then coming back with a hammer and tacking that in. When I get close to the uh, wood, I swap over to a punch. If you don't use the punch, your hammer will hit that tongue and break it off. Now because this is the bottom piece, I'm also going to put one nail down here to hold it in place on the lower half. Probably do that every other stud. The first piece is in, I'm moving down to the next piece where I can just slide this on top of the previous one. And the main thing I've got to look out for is that I match up the corner or the edge over here. Okay, and it's okay if the other end exceeds other edge and now to get this into place I'm going to use a scrap 2x4 that I can put this on top of a large surface area and tap this down some. Now that I have that snugged on there quite nice it's going to be more of the same where I just pre-drill and then put one of those nails back in there. Whenever I get close to that board, I grab my punch again. Snug it on up in there. And the back wall is done, except for one more board at the very top. Whenever I calculated how many I would need, I did not take into account that these are actually only five inches instead of five and a half. So that's where my last piece up there comes into play. 
Man, look at that background. It's a bit shiny. I may have to put some kind of stain on there to tone it down a little bit, um, but looks pretty good. Uh, so the next thing to do is to get the side over here done. Now my workbench is going to be um, 27 inches, I believe, on this wall here, um, somewhere up in there. Uh, so I want to, I guess, do five feet out from over there. So I'm going to come out here five foot, and that should give me enough filming space back here in this corner. The camera placement for the filming is going to be somewhere around here for the face, I believe. And so you'll just see a little bit of this wall, and then you won't see past that in the filming. And then for the overhead shots, I think it'll be about the same. It'll show some of this wall over here and the back wall a little bit. For the side wall, I'm doing five foot, which means I can actually get three of these out of each 16 footer. And I'll have a foot left over, so every uh, fifth board, I'll have one solid piece that I could maybe put at the top or something. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this one cut out. deal is with the back wall. I'm just going to set these down here and then pre-drill and then put the nails in. Pretty simple stuff. Now I do have this gap over here and I may just put a board in there at some point just to fill that but for now I'm just going to simply attach this to the wall and not worry about that little cavity. You've already seen all this, so I'll show you what it looks like in just a bit. I finished up the small wall without you, and it is looking really nice. So I think as far as the tongue and groove goes, this back wall is finished. So as you can see, it has really come together nice. There's a bit of a shine to it, so I will definitely have to figure out a way to film over here without having that shine. Um, but the camera itself will be mounted uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, let's back up a little. About here, I believe. And so the t uh, lighting will be uh, from these rafters here. And then I'll have a hair light that will kind of be off from this piece right here coming straight down. And that should eliminate a lot of that glare. And I will have the front door closed, so that won't be an issue there. But it's looking really nice. I'm very pleased with the way it looks right now. Thank you so much for watching this part of the shed interior build. This is going to be part of the new YouTube channel, which I am getting closer and closer to being able to announce to you. Uh, it's just another part of this process. So I think in the next video, I will be doing either shelves or I will be doing the bench that's going to go right here for filming. And that's what these uh, two by sixes or four. But anyway, that's the end of this simple tongue and groove back corner wall here. Uh, I think it's going to look pretty good on the, uh, the new channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.